Welcome back to Soccer Card United. It's episode 214 of the greatest soccer po- card po- <laughs> the greatest soccer card podcast in the world. My name is Jason. That's Enzo. Hi Enzo. Hello Jason. You look very professional sitting over there. Oh my goodness. You're not wrong. Thanks for noticing. Yeah, no problem. Um the viewers, the listeners obviously are experiencing I I hope a, a, a superior audio uh experience um, when when you talk, but the viewers are getting talk about a superior experience yeah they're getting a treat this is the new the new era i would say of soccer cards united podcasting mm-hmm. all podcasts mm-hmm. arguably look at look at ah i feel like i'm in i'm in the gantry yeah you're up there uh you could be like a a, a jamie carragher or, or a Gar- which one are you more like jamie carragher or gary neville jesus that's a tough question that's a horrible question i don't like i mean jamie carragher i suppose yeah mm. i think you're carragher and i'm neville Wow. Wow. Now, to be fair, like if you think of like Martin Tyler, he always holds a thing up. Like He doesn't necessarily have one of these on the go. Um, no, you, you, your headset mic you see more in American sports. Um, I was going to say. At a basketball court or, or at a wrestling wrestling no, tournament. I remember the wrestler announced he used to wear them. I feel like Joe Rogan commentating at the UFC at the table. Mm. I'm officially Joe Rogan. I'm going to shave my head next. Um yeah so very good uh, i hope everyone is enjoying that um and we're we're always we're always working to uh to improve the quality of the, the operation here at soccer to innovate because well. innovate, now i'm over here jason i'm talking about I'm, you still have me you still have yeah. me um yeah uh, rumor has it you might have one of these yourself in the near future yeah yeah that's right such, um, is, such is the kind of levels that we we're i can't even I can't. i'm just i'm excited to have um for the thumbnails of the episode i'm excited to not have to try and crop out or angle the picture in a certain way so that the mic is not the mic arms not in the frame and all that it's great we've we've changed um, the game potentially here we'll see we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes people might be sitting at home going this is much worse yeah this is horrible i can hear yeah. him breathing i can hear him breathing or whatever um anyway lots of stuff to discuss on the show uh today we had a very football heavy weekend um for the easter bank holiday we'll get into that later on in the show okay um but first we're going to start because we were on the road to the euros euro 24 with tops when we you know, got road to the euros finest that came out um and despite a lot of criticism was quite a big success yeah, um huge, huge demand for that set and then we're back on the road to the euros and um, but this time we're seeing the debut of a of a hobby brand well known in baseball um, coming over to soccer, and that is Top's pristine Road to the Euros 2024 has been announced. We have a pristine soccer product for the first time. Um, if you're familiar with baseball, you'll be familiar with the brand. We are not familiar with the brand. We've just seen Top's pristine baseball many a time uh, in our days, but we've never dabbled in it. We've never opened it ourselves. Jason, I'm not sure about you, but I can only no myself here. And it's coming. We're getting another road to the Euro. So they're before releasing the official, official, official Euro product, hobby product, uh, similar to how Panini do the World Cup, we're getting some road to the World Cup product, uh, to the Euro products, um, which obviously gives us an opportunity to bring in teams that didn't qualify, players that didn't qualify that they still have the licenses for, countries that didn't qualify. Jason, you'll be hoping, I think, that Ireland are in this. You'll be hoping. Mm. Uh, even if you, you don't love the design. Yeah. Um, the design, we can we can... We can talk about because it's kind of a lot of people have been shocked by the designs and <laughs> um, just just to give the kind of the bare specs here um you're looking at an april 26th release date according to this uh, blowout first buzz the box basics are three autographs or auto relics per six pack box so three autographs or auto relics so you get three autos per box that's massive yeah three i think encased autographs as well Foof. Um, this modern throwback gets a run for soccer fans. This is what's buzzworthy about it, according to Blood. This modern throwback gets a run for soccer fans, uh, quote, showcasing Europe's flawless footballers on ultra modern and clean designs in what Tops calls a box breaker's dream. So then again, we see the Ooh. the the move to breaking as the as the preferred, you know. Um, yeah. 
Each pack contains one encased autograph or encased base pristine parallel and two base parallels, or they can have one auto relic and seven base cards, just like in baseball. It's a 200 card set, so the finest was only a 100 card set, so they've expanded the, the base set. Plenty of parallels with the pristine encased refactors, including uh, blue to 75, gold to 50, orange to 25, pink to 15, red to 5, and uh, 101 black. There will also be standard refractors as well as green to 125, purple, 99, blah, 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 and one of one super factors not encased. The inserts will include six sets. The sets are, are called this Inevitable, Pristine Borders, Fresh Faces, Marvelous Moments, Iconic 11, that's number to 50, and a one per case, case hit, Pristine Prodigies. The two rarer sets will only have reds and supers, while the other sets have gold, orange, red, and super factor parallels at the same volume of the base parallels. And for the ink, which is the autographs, will include pristine autos to 99 with gold to 50, orange 25, 101 black for parallels. Joining them will be pristine borders autos with gold, orange, red, and supers. There will also be pristine pair dual autos, marvelous moments, and pristine prodigies. Uh, pro- prodigies. These will only have reds and supers. This is all very difficult to follow. Uh, but basically, it's there's a there's a whole kind of wide thing going on. Yeah, pristine prodigy there, Jason, in the top left, you can see there. Oh yeah, I see that there. Yeah. Um, this seems to mostly be a a, a set that's based on shoving the largest number of fonts into the same card. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at this. There's like six different fonts on the pristine prodigy pro, pro, prodigies card. Why can't I yeah, say I'm that not, word? I'm not familiar with pristine baseball. I don't know how popular it is. I don't know if the designs are the same. I'm pretty sure they are. Um. I'm not loving it, my you know, for my personal taste. I think it'll be a great set, though, if that makes sense. Like, it's a high-end Euro set. Like, it's not going to be, it's not going to do bad, I don't think. I think it's going to be a good set. I don't love the design, but I think when we start seeing boxes of this open, you're seeing three national kit autographs plus everything else that's in there. I think it's going to be an exciting box. I don't love the design. I think Panini did uh, Road to the World Cup National Treasures, didn't they? Yes. This is probably the closest thing to that, I suppose. This will be the closest thing to that. Because we had Euro Mosaic, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, as well. Road to the Euro, or sorry, Road to the World Cup Mosaic, um, mm. as well. There is a similar base design to uh, to baseball. Yeah. Um, and then there's the pristine borders. So pristine borders is going to be like a kind of national hero style. Mm, I like that. The national flag is always too well. People love yeah. that. Yeah. Especially with a national kit beside it, that's going to be something. Hmm. Exactly. Um, so that's, that's, I think, you know, like a lot of people kind of had the, uh, what would you say had the, uh, problem of unlicensed or whatever for, um, or teams that were left out or different things for finest. And yet it did very, very well. Um, and I think this is going to be the same. There's going to be a lot of people who are like, I don't like that design or I don't like this. or I don't like that. But because we're not getting national team sets of a year, (laughs) Um, it's it's exciting. It's a novel, yeah. It's a novel, and so like if you had a nice pristine patch art graph of an Irish player, I think you'd be buzzing. I'd be very happy. Yeah, and I, that, the thing I'm is, like, addition to my collection of Irish patch yeah. arts, but, like that's great for you. But then on the flip side, all the Portuguese collector, you know, like it's like all each team has much more, I'd say, collectability. Maybe. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I'm into it. Um. So we we we'll we'll see. Three weeks time. Uh, that goes. Yeah. Nice it energy. also raises the possibility of perhaps seeing a UEFA club competitions pristine in future. Yes. So, which would be an extremely yeah, rich set. I think it would have been fun if we had a bit more pre-production done here, Jason. It'd be a bit fun to go through other baseball sets and say, what would we have preferred over pristine? Like, all, all those licenses they are going to carry over. Mm-hmm. Was there a better one that they could have used, in our opinion? You know? Right. Yeah. Um... Oh. I'm just having a quick look. You're scouring through baseball. I'm scouring through baseball. <laughs> um, I don't know, but I, I almost... Uh, it's nice to, to give the old live reaction and also to not have all these pre... Because I like not knowing anything about Pristine or you know or Inception or whatever it is when it comes in because then you go like, what's this? It's like a whole new, fresh thing. But it's, it's also fun as well because obviously the kind of hardcores that are in the hobby, um, like people that are deep into baseball, which is obviously such a popular part of the hobby. Huge, I mean cornerstone of it it's interesting for like it's interesting the experience of someone that has actually opened baseball pristine and likes it or doesn't like it and then seeing this kind of carry over 
Yeah, I think the worst example, um, even though the product actually when you open when you open it, it's not that it's not that bad. The worst example of this methodology is finest flashbacks, where you're mm. flashing back with a soccer set that flashes back to the nineties to a set that Never predates seen. soccer cards and and you know, it couldn't possibly a soccer collector couldn't possibly relate to it, really. Um that's the kind of bad side of it, is just kind of porting it over and assuming that it'll just transpose perfectly. But when you something like this, where it's a rich product, and um, like I say, it's kind of in that like national treasures bracket. We don't know based on the baseball price. I think the baseball was like three hundred and fifty dollars or something. Okay. Um. So I don't know how close that's going to be. Obviously, Euro product. We're used to Panini pricing national international competitions, and they tend to do that quite highly for their Euros and their uh, World Cup products. So it remains to be seen. Um. But yeah. Love that air here, Jason. What's up? Are you talking? Are you, are you are you looking at something? Yeah, sorry, I was looking. I was looking at um, they just released the Euro stickers. Oh, the Euro stickers came out. Yeah, they're officially live on the website. I was just looking at that. We were just looking at me, seeing what what's he looking. I was at? looking at you. I was trying to work out. What, I was trying to. I thought maybe we had like some lag or something going on. <laughs> I was like, yeah, why is he not doing anything? <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. You know, sorry, just um, the Euro stickers. There you go. Yeah, because I was going on just for for the listener. I was checking other MLB. I wanted to look at some different MLB products to see if there was any other brand I wanted to carry over. And then I got distracted when I seen the Euro stickers. I said, it's Euro stickers. The uh, the general public were shocked by the fact that Panini had lost the Euro sticker license. Yeah, the people that are not deep in the hobby don't know anything about Fanatics, don't know anything about anything. They're not, they're not clued yeah. in. They just know every year Panini, anytime there's a national thing. Tournament going on, Panini have the licenses and they, yeah, they were dumbfounded. They were like, what the hell? Why is it not Panini? Why is it Thompson? Why is there unlicensed stuff and you know all this? And then people in the comments were like telling them, you see, Michael Rubin, all right? He wanted to, and they just were so confused. That was funny. Um, But yeah, I think obviously like there's, there is that thing of like Tops, they bought the Merlin brand and all that stuff to have that kind of sticker heritage. Mm-hmm. Um, But uh, it'd be interesting to see how, how the general public... Uh, Take on Feels. set, yeah, yeah. Are there parallels in this, like Panini did for the World Cup? That's what I was looking for, Jason. That's where oh. my island came from. If you go down a bit, there's one there that looks to seem to have different colors. Look, that one to the left, the the Mega Eco Box. Oh yeah, I see it here now. I don't know what that means. Two parallel stickers contains ninety euro ninety twenty twenty four stickers, including two parallel stickers. When you're good, you're good. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're guaranteed parallels. Two parallels and one gold signature sticker in this mega eco box. Right, but the stick, the signature is not a real signature, right? It's printed. No. So the mega eco box is kind of the one you want, basically. We've just stumbled upon. I guess so. Let me see. You do the the ten gold stickers. See, there's so many skews. That's why I don't understand. Because, like, surely the main, the main box that looks a lot better. Should have the parallel, shouldn't it? Like the official Euro Mega Starter Bundle. Is there no parallels in that? Mm, 24 stickers plus an 88, 88 page album. Uh, full box, 100 packets. I think there's no guaranteed parallels. Okay. So you probably, you, you will get parallels, but I don't know if there's guaranteed parallels. Oh, I see. Yeah. If, if it has that kind of black and gold label. On the box that tells you what you're getting. See, you see the it's a yellow and black. Do you see now? Um, on the other set, sorry, on, on, that one. on the other set, on the other set, yeah, the yellow and black banner up the top of the box. Yes, that's right. Because oh, the, the two parallels is fascinating. I mean, again, I don't know if they're numbered parallels, I think in stickers it's harder to number them, so they're just different color, right? Uh, yeah, I believe they're just different colors. Um, one interesting thing is compared to the cards, like compared to finest, they seem to have for the unlicensed teams, they seem to have just done a headshot. Makes sense. So you see Julian Brandt there for Germany. Mushala yeah, is just as head. That's smart. Marco Camavinga just as head. That's 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 a design. That's a different design approach to what they did for. Uh, I think it's easier to get away with that on a little sticker than it is on a big card. You couldn't just have Federico DeMarco's head just staring out at you on a 
on a standard trading card. On a top chrome. I don't think so. No. Maybe not. It's basically, we're getting like Jason, the Euros is around the corner. Like I feel like there hasn't been a lot of build up. People haven't focused on it yet, but it's coming very, very soon. Like it we're talking indeed. what, two or three two months away? Is that right? Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. June. June. Jesus. Jesus. End of June. Jesus. Jesus. Start. Yeah. Let's wow. go. Did the Euros be wrapped up internationally? Like, that's fascinating. How's that gonna affect things? It's actually the middle of June, it's the fourteenth of June it kicks off. So how is that going to impact it all? Yeah, we're going to have, you know, uh, Jamal Musiala and Wirtz, you know, r- winning the Euros for Germany and then uh, everyone wants them at the national. Maybe. 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 Maybe that's a stretch, but maybe. There you go. Um, I, I said that. Oh, sorry, go ahead. What other top sets do you think we're going to get for the Euros? Do you think we're just looking at a Chrome and then that's them done or do you think there's something else in the top? I don't. I mean, we are like we're pretty close, but they've got they've got two products in the last three weeks or something. So like they're you know, I did a road, um, road to get that done. Get that done. Like, what do you think our flagship release is going to be? For like, obviously Chrome. You're expecting Chrome. You would expect a Chrome, but do you expect a museum post tournament? Do you expect? I suppose I'd be expecting a kind of a, a, a general audience Chrome, or you know, they're not going. I hope they're not going to do paper. So just imagine there's a Chrome. Yeah. Um, and then I would expect something else as well. So you're, you're saying for Euro 2024, you're expecting four total products from Tops. I'm not trying to put you on the spot there by saying it, but that's kind of what you're expecting. Yeah, I'm thinking because I'm thinking about what Panini did for the last World Cup. So they did Road to the World Cup Don Rose, Road to the World Cup National Treasures. So that's that would be that yeah. would correspond to Finest and Mosaic as well. The Road to the World Cup. Road to the, oh, that's three, but that's the World Cup. That's the World Cup. And then they did Prism and Eminence. Yeah, and they did many skews of Prism. So that'd be five brands. Yeah, do you think, basically, I suppose that's it. Is Pristine our answer to National Treasures, or is that our answer answer to Eminence? Surely there's a high end. They have to. You have to. That must be. Shouldn't there? Is there? Like, there's not well, I suppose. A... I don't think. The do licensing think... thing does, does come into play, because if you have, like, if you're, if you don't have the licenses for... Yeah if, em- yeah, if Eminence was missing three or four of the top, top teams, it would be a bit shoddy. They might have done a road too because they'd be able to then put in the teams that they didn't have. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a curious one. It's a very curious one indeed. Because I think, I'm pretty sure they have like, I don't think, I don't know if they just have Euro 2024 or if they have a multi-Euro deal. I think it's a multi-Euro deal. I think they have 2028. Yeah. So in that case, it's like you want to set the tone, I suppose, with, we're going to 2028 we want to be expecting oh they're going to do this one they're going to do you know mm. that's like you expect eminence basically like in 2026 we're going to have an eminence you know you can safely assume and that's because they set the kind of tone but they set the tone of 2018 not 2014 so i suppose they get you get a, a tournament's grace to figure out what you want to do i suppose do you know what we could get just this is i'm just thinking off the top of my head here mm-hmm. we might get a euro 2024 knockout like how we get the ucc knockout Oh, yeah, you might get like who, who's in the knockout stages. They're on, they're getting a set. Italy in the knockout stage, they're probably like hoping all the unlicensed teams see an early bat. Get knocked out, yeah. Mmm, because it'd be a bit shoddy if most of the knockout teams were, um, were unlicensed. Yeah, you'll have people in tops UK cheering against England. No, you won't get that. Come on, come on, it can happen. Come on, but you know, listen, I'm just saying. Pristine is here. It's new. I like that they've introduced a new brand to it uh, in terms of soccer, a new brand crossing over to soccer. Um, that's something I, I'm, we're hoping to see more of, I suppose, in the future with, with nice brands. I don't know if there's any specific brand that people that collect both are saying, when are they going to do this for soccer? Whether it's a tribute or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Sterling baseball. Like, is there Sterling soccer? Can we get that done? I don't know. I don't even know if we'd want to. Like, I don't know what's, what's good and what's bad. Dynasty Soccer, Pristine Soccer. This year, we're getting two first-time Tops Soccer brand, brands coming over to Soccer. Tops mm-hmm. brands coming over to Soccer. I feel like the Euros. I feel like everyone's expecting Chrome, but I feel like we're going to get something else as well, maybe. But I do think Chrome will have a lot of skews. Blasters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'd expect that to be seen in the UK and in game or wherever they have their, their deals. I expect Hobby Euro 2024 Blasters. And obviously, mm-hmm. there these stickers, too. We're not we're not sticker guys ourselves, Jason, but that is heritage, and it is interesting to see tops having to handle and manage 
But I suppose Match Attacks has them well versed in this, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're no strangers to the to the uh, sticker, the sticker, and and, and, and kind of uh, general release retail trading cards uh, game. Could we be I, right I, saying yeah. that this could be the very first time Panini are properly sitting there on the sidelines having to eat the kind of fruits of what Fanatics have done to them? Because they still have their basketball license at the moment. They still have all of that. This is the first time where I'd say normally it's um, festival atmosphere inside the Panini HQ in Modena. Yeah. I'm just saying this is a... It's we've a, seen them do... We've seen them do um, the the England set. They announced, Panini UK announced the England set. Yeah. Um, and they were using all of the ones that they had licensed to put them in. And I wonder, actually, I don't know this. Uh, maybe I'll check. I wonder if Panini in each of the other countries is doing the same thing. So Panini Italia putting out an Italy set mm. with the other, you know, and um, that's what the sticker collecting desires during World Cup. Yeah. Mm. That's that could could very well be. In order to do that, you're going to have to maneuver the Panini website. So good luck with you there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling already here. I've, things have broken down entirely for me. But they've dropped a, a world class 2024 world class and they're using national kits celebrating the fifa legacy they have brazil germany italy argentina france uruguay england and spain mm. in their world-class brand which i don't know if they're cards or stickers stickers it says stickers world class yeah world class and top class <laughs> yeah so but in here but here basically like this time of year, we normally print stuff, so we're going to have to make some stickers. We're just going to print some stuff. Yeah, yeah we're going to have to. What can we do? What can, like, what can we create? So the printers and stickers factory in Modena is ready to go. But yeah. They've done that under the FIFA license. Interesting stuff. Fascinating stuff going on in the licensing world, and soccer seems to be just at the heart of it, getting ripped apart. Left, right, and yeah. center. Differences coming, coming and going. You have to just adapt to it, Chase. Well, Panini wouldn't be happy with me earlier because I said we're not used to getting national team products every year. And they would retort and they would say, we have done FIFA Select last year and we're doing it again. They just put that up on their website. Yeah, they've put the whole whack on their website, Jason. Yes, we already talked about Serie A when that was announced. But then they announced uh, EPL, La Liga and FIFA Select would all be coming back as well uh, for another another go. FIFA Don Russell uh, is up on that website too, Jason. Yeah, I think we talked about that when it came out because we saw the Lavinia Mal. Yeah, uh, I'm just saying the, rooms. the artwork of the box officially coming soon. So Panini America's coming soon on soccer. It's starting to fill up. We're talking about five different SKUs, Jason. You got a messy stained glass in the FIFA Select. I'm growing to this stained glass, even though initially I thought it would look better without the without the footballs, the soccer balls. But now I kind of like it. Hmm. Although I do think it looks very similar to that MLS thing that Tops put out. That also had Messi and four balls that were on fire. Do you remember that? Oh, um, yeah, I do remember that. But that was that was weird. <laughs> that was at least this is based on a stained glass window. That was based on I don't know what that was based on. Somebody's That's... nightmare. Oh my god. Um, Visionary has been redesigned. The Visionary insert. Um. They've kept artistic impressions, which I didn't like in last year's selects, and I still don't like. Can I say, if you take that, right, joking aside, let's let's have some jokes aside here, right? If you take this design and remove the vertical writing on the far left, that says artistical impression. Mm -hmm. And if you got rid of the FIFA logo and the select logo, that's a nice card. Mm. And to be honest, you could leave the select logo there. That entire... Take away the FIFA and the name. Don't name the uh, insert on the insert. Yeah, let, like Kaboom. Uh, Kaboom does say Kaboom, I suppose. But it's like, why? Why is that so necessary? That doesn't say stained glass. Yeah, it's good enough. That's it. If you need to write down what it is, you can't just tell by visually seeing it. Then get rid of that. Um, that's a big issue. Inserts have is that they all feel the need to have a name and have that name in a random text on the card, taking up most of the card, mm. Mm. or just taking up the card. I think, yeah, there's no a lot of work yeah. from both companies in the regard of inserts. Because inserts are always seen as less desirable, whereas I think they should be more desirable because they are short print by virtue of being inserts and not base cards. Yeah, base I cards. agree with that. Yeah, like Visionary. Can we go back to that one? Yeah. What the fuck is that? It's not great. 
No, but that's ultimately the answer. It's not great. Do better. Um, but you're looking at your, your same configuration, your three three autographs or memorabilia cards, um, and your seven inserts or insert parallels and 14 parallels, including five numbered parallels per box on average. Can I say I don't love how big they made the borders on that one as well? The Luminium Al, the, the field vision, they really let... This one? In the past, you got a lot of field. Yes. Now it's a lot of card design. And he's he's actually not even on the field. Yeah, well, like, that's... I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I don't love it. I don't know. More I field. The parallel pops more if there's less field, I suppose. Because there's more... True, because some select parallels, you can't really tell what's going on because there's only a small little band of... Yeah, look, we'll see. Hmm. I think um, they'll all be good sets, depending on the price, of course. Like the price point will dictate how good or bad the um the selects are this year. Yeah, I'm just looking here. But again, people have shared kind of the idea of not wanting a select every year. You know, it's almost like don't spoil us, don't do that. Like I don't want it. It's special. Because we had it and it didn't have it for many years. Yeah. A lot of the OGs, especially 2016, 17 select, stuff like that, 2017, 18. But in fairness, that was a two year burst and then it stopped. Is this a two year burst? I don't know. It does feel like. I think it's a, it's a way for them to, to do a release. They don't want to do Mosaic, obviously, because Mosaic didn't go down well. Yeah. But they're not able to commit necessarily to a prism. Which is interesting, um, but I do think it makes sense. Because probably select is a shorter print product. It's like you can just kind of bang them out. It's a different. You're not you don't they don't want to kind of jam up their prism production line or whatever it is with these brands because they could be printing, you know, whatever. Other stuff, other prisms. I understand. Um so between we already have, you know, Euro Pristine and Tree Select coming back. So it's a good good year for national kits. I'll tell you that much. That's true. Um and I just wanted to pay kind of some uh, attention. To you know, we talked about Futera Unique is coming. Yeah, nostalgia. Uh, unique nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I just saw some stuff on their on their website. Um, it says it's coming April sixth, but I could have sworn it was. I've seen it open uh, though. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on there, but anyway, um, I just thought there was a lot of good stuff, lost lot to like in this set, and a lot of like stuff where you just feel like, why can't Thompson Panini do that? Hmm. In terms of, you know... Oh, the photo. There's Uriel Ferdinand, your Ronaldinho, um, signing loads of cards. Like, just obviously, like, that's, you know, Thompson Panini wouldn't... They wouldn't just be doing it kind of in this casual way. Yeah. Um, But to a certain extent, I, I, I kind of like it. You know, it kind of demystifies the process a little bit. And it's like, yeah, you just have to go meet Rio. Obviously... For your sticker set, for your sticker sheets, this is entirely different. This is like a few on card autos they can do. You can sit there; it's grand. But um, I think uh, like we saw those few uh, pictures of the tops uh, dynasty signings. Yeah. Um, and it was like we were all really excited about it, but it, that's because we're on like kind of like very strict rations when it comes to this sort of stuff. Um, and there's no need for us to be. I don't think. You know, I like I like seeing this for sure. Yeah. Ivan Rakitic, John Terry, Michael Owen. Good fun. Oh, that is good. Good images. You know, because even like the top zones, like the cards are very much in the background as well. But partially because they don't want you to see the design. They don't want you to get too excited about it, etc. Like it's there, but it's not there. Yeah. But yeah, this is nice. Obviously, like Futera from their from their point of view, they're they're trying to uh capture market share they're trying to kind of prove themselves and convince everyone yeah you know do this it's it's yeah we are getting real signatures blah 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 yeah it's good tops and panini can afford slightly to kind of more you know say you'll just you just buy it yeah just buy it relax just buy it just shut up and buy it but you on the flip side, when you see the platinum sets you get a nice little video you get them chatting you get you know they're mm. good as well. but i know what you mean like it'd be nicer just to see some more even if you release a post product you know what i mean like the product comes out and then you're posting all the photos of them oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 yeah, they're, they're they're missing out on a lot of um, I guess social media, just based on a few, a few different. Mm. Yeah, there you go. But like you think like you look you look at this, and if this had say, if it was set like this, and you had your license, it was licensed as well. Mm -hmm. It would be like 
it's so expensive because like obviously you have to pay everybody for their and then you have to license it and all that so, it, so i understand that there are things that fratera can do because they're a smaller organization that you know whatever um but it's just nice to see like it's this this is i think a product that because i've opened um you. unique world football as well and they're not to be entirely written off like they do have a lot of good elements um, That's true. and if i was top Sofranini, i'd just be constantly stealing their ideas and frustrating them <laughs> very very good yeah um so can I say anyway, when, you look at that, when you look at that and you have a box that has four mini packs inside that are also sealed, and then you look at Panini Chronicles that has three mini boxes. Obviously, we have finest for tops, but I still think <laughs> they could do something that has three minis or four minis in it. Do you know what I mean? Well, I think um Pristine has three oh, very that. chunky boxes or three very chunky packs, which will amount to almost a little box. I might be showing my ignorance in the in the non soccer brands. So let me yeah. Let's let me sit back and see how pristine goes though. Um see if I can find a, a pristine box opening here. I'm very sure you can. I can. This is from Striker Breaks. Um let's see if we can find out how it how it goes, what to expect. This is Striker Breaks. Thank you to Striker Breaks for allowing us to steal your video. Steal your video. Yeah, so these are more so big chunky packs. These are big chunky. These are like fat packs. Yes. Well, fat packs were hits in them. Yeah, these are like good fat packs. Oh, look at that. So there's your... So you open your pack and you get your smaller pack and your encased parallel okay. or your auto or whatever it is. Yeah, this is an encased parallel. Right, yeah. Very good. I just don't love the pristine brand, I guess. Well, you've no, you've no reason to. You've no affinity for it. You've no experience of it. Maybe when you get those unlicensed Italy pristine cards, I'll be the <laughs> Yeah, fairness. If there was an Irish card there, I'm sure you'd be delighted. Yeah, listen, we can't judge um, it until we see it. No, but it, it, it's exciting, and it's it's you know exciting and and scary at the same time to to try new things. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Uh, speaking of uh, trying new things, we had quite a weekend. Uh, Easter We're Sunday and here. Monday. That's a new thing. Um, we saw the Continental Tires uh, Women's League Cup final oh, yeah. um, at Molyneux, the stadium of Wolverhampton Wanderers, on Sunday. Yep. Nice um, Sunday. Arsenal won it an extra time against Kate Chelsea. McCabe is unbelievable. Kate McCabe is an incredible footballer. We learned that. Um, Lauren James is only all right, you know, but Katie McCabe is really good. Lauren James is unbelievable as well. Yeah. Um, that was good fun. And then we had, we're at Loose End on Monday. Very so loose. we decided loose to event. go and see Birmingham City. Um, because Birmingham City, the options were to go to Birmingham City or, Wolver or, or uh, West Brom. And West Brom was sold out. Yeah, we, <laughs> couldn't, we couldn't sit beside each other at West Brom, so we decided to support Birmingham City. Uh, it was yeah. with a free UB40 concert that we weren't able to go to. But Absolutely. We to that. Tragic. Yeah. That was a yeah. proper championship game. Uh, Birmingham won. Big for them. 1-0. Uh, the goal came from a mistake. It was pure <laughs> championship. Vibe. Various mistakes. Yeah, it was absolute um, championship quality football. Brilliant. Brilliant to see. Brilliant. Uh, to be honest, can I say, the steak pies. I got to get involved in a very English cultural tradition of football games, which is to get the pie. And I went for some steak pie. And I'll tell you this much. I didn't just get one. I got two. Because by the time I ate the first one, I needed another one. It was delicious. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like uh, the 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 pie um, is the equivalent of the hot dog. Yeah. That's it. I yeah, wanted a hot dog. Too, but I knew the pie was the way to go. And I have. I'm living with no regrets, Jason. That pie was unbelievable. Very good. Yeah, shame about the game. Shame about the game. If only to get the football quality of football had been good as the quality of the pies. Yeah, we'd have a good um, game. You should have put in a, a, a post to that uh, account, Footy Scran. Mm. Bit of this. I love that. I love that. I love that account. Absolutely. But you took yeah. a photo of me. I don't know if it ever went anywhere. Did it? It didn't, but I can put it up after the show. Thanks for keeping that to yourself. That was just <laughs> for you, was it? That's just for my private collection. Yeah. <laughs> I went looking. I was like, that photo, what the fuck? What's Jason yeah. doing? He took a photo of me with my with my pie, and, it, and no one ever got to see it. I am. Um, 
I loved how many people at Birmingham City were wearing Stone Island uh, clothes with the badge out. It was incredible. It was like, there were so many aspects of that game that was like, you know. Exactly what it should have been. Exactly what it should have been. I was like, what the hell? This is crazy. Like, this is, you know, people going with the, 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 the hood that has the, the, the eye holes and stuff, you know, those <laughs> With the Stone Island logo, I was like, what is this? Like, What is going on? The away fans being much louder than the home fans. Yeah, yeah. Or some, some, some cracking chants, many of which we can't repeat here. No, could never. Could um, never. The, the Preston North End fans had a lot of fun with the fact that there was a concert given, a concert ticket built into the game ticket. Um, yeah. They were letting the Birmingham fans know that they were only there for the concert. It was very good. Yeah. Um, it was... Quite enjoyable. Uh, our American listeners may be interested to know that Tom Brady has a minority stake in Birmingham City. Yeah, there was an American flag uh, on a pole outside the stadium. But he was not present at the game, as far as we know. No, as far as we know, he wasn't there. Yeah, um, I think the the big, and it's, we understand why, but like the not being able to bring alcohol out to your, your seat in, a, in English stadiums is a sad thing, but it is something, we know why they do it, like it's understandable, but we've seen various kind of tourists that kind of ended up in Birmingham, like ourselves, I guess. Um, that were shocked. We weren't shocked. We knew the drill, but uh, that they were shocked that um, they couldn't enjoy their point with the game. Yeah, and um, it was it was considering what the what the atmosphere in the stands was like without alcohol. I can only imagine what it would have been like with alcohol. And I, I uh, support it. I suppose I support it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was it was it was good fun. I have to say, the atmosphere at, at Arsenal Chelsea was also really good, but in a very very different way. Yes. Um, it was like uh, there was a lot of people traveling over from uh, from Dublin with us to go and see the game. Um, there was uh, people I heard like people speaking German and other languages around. It was very kind of like cosmopolitan, very kind of like banterful. The Chelsea fans, by the way, shocking all game. Uh, I'm cutting that out. I'm cutting that come out. On, come on. I have to cut it out. I have no soundboard effect. No, come on. I have a little soundboard here and I was waiting. No. And to be honest, I, I I didn't use it as well as I wanted to, but I had to throw one in. You have to leave it in. Just don't don't tire yourself out. Right? I won't do it again. You'll never see me using my soundboard again on a podcast, I promise. But just leave it in. A bit a bit of sound. See what the people, they're not expecting it. You know, don't edit it. Don't change now. Don't edit I'll leave it in, but if 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 I'm told, if I'm assured that that is the end of that, that's the end of it. All right, well then I'll leave it in. How do you feel about me using the sensor button? It, should I curse? Is that fun? Um, how do you how does that work? Like I could be talking to you now, and I could just say, I'll tell you something about the Preston North. Uh, if you use that every time you curse, it'd be handy. The podcast will be mostly that. Oh wow. <laughs> No, that's me though. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. no, 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 no. I swear to God, I will end this recording right there. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What happened again? I'm done. Um. Anyway, I was just saying that the uh, the Chelsea fans were underrepresented compared to the Arsenal fans. Um. There was a bit of a scary moment where Frida Manham collapsed on the pitch, but she is that was okay. Cool. Um. It was uh very scary. The the stadium was. In shock, yeah. Um, and they were going mad at the the um the first aid team because they were really taking the time to get over to her. They were really mm. the crowd had to scream at them to start running. So you can't just oh, walk. You can't just walk. No, no, no. It's no, like it, there was a, it, we were all like it's an emergency and the team were like the stretcher bearers and stuff were like, Yeah, we'll get there when we get there, you know? Shocking. Um speaking of footy scran though, uh <laughs> we went to get a hot dog at half time. What is going on at Molyneux, by the way? What's going on at Molyneux? Is there any Wolves fans Great. that can write in and tell us? Um, we went to get a hot dog at halftime. It was near the end of halftime, so that you know there wasn't a lot left. We oh. went up. There was maybe three, three or four hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. We had a few. And, uh, on and I was praying, don't get the hot dog. Don't get the hot dog. Mm. Get me to the front. I want this match day hot dog. I was buzzing, starving as and well. And then you got the front of the line. You said, "Can I have two hot dogs?" And you said, and they said to you. Uh, those hot dogs are reserved. <laughs> How the fuck? Yeah. Reserved. Those right? hot dogs are reserved. How the f do you? Sorry, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> what happened again? How, how do you reserve the hot dogs? Like, uh, me and Jason ultimately came to the decision that must just be the staff are going to eat them. 
I think it was like they just said, "Now we're keeping these hot dogs." Yeah, we're gonna. You know what? Our shift is done. We worked a lot here. We're gonna eat these hot dogs. And I would have rather them say yeah. that they're actually my hot dogs. They said they're reserved because I'm like, there's no way there's a method to reserve a hot dog at a football game. Like the carnage. What do I do? show up my passport? Uh, this is my hot dog. Yeah. No, I actually I added a hot dog to my ticket when I. But it's not like. No, there's no way. There's no way. No. We got absolutely done. She refused to sell us that hot dog, and I was starving. And then I got a pack of buttons. Which was a big mistake. So if you are Didn't a point, it was so funny. <laughs> I got a pint. I was like, just give me a drink. I can't even handle it. We were just at the point where we had to go back out for the second half. And so we were grabbing a hot dog to bring it to our seat because we didn't want to miss the game. We knew we couldn't bring drink out, so we, we didn't want to miss the start of the second half. And then when she said the hot dogs were um uh, were reserved, I said, Give me a pack of buttons. And then Jason goes, Gotta give me a pint of this. <laughs> and I said, Jason, you can't bring it back in. The game's about easy. He's like, I know, I need it. After that, it news, was just, give me a pint. It was just shocking. No, these are reserved. Like it was the most. It was like, what is Harvard. happening here? It's hard. Um, so maybe people who have been to Molyneux or who are season ticket holders at Wolves or who are maybe at other stadiums can tell us maybe is reserving are... hot dogs a thing? Because I don't yeah. think it is. It might just be people with life experience that can e- email in or message in and say they were definitely just eating them themselves. Yeah, let us know what you th- what, what happened to those hot dogs. That's our that's our big question for you this week. Um, Enzo, next week you're away. Yeah, so next week, Sunday through to Wednesday, I'm going to be in the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful city of Madrid. I've never been, but I assume it's beautiful because it's in It Spain. is beautiful. And have you been? Of course you've been. Twice, oh, yeah. whoa, 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 I'm so sorry. Big Atletico Madrid fan, have you been there? Whoa, what an insult that would have been. Yeah, I'm buzzing. I'm, I'm going to the Champions League, Real Madrid versus Manchester City. Uh, Kyle Walker is apparently injured, but then he's apparently might not be because he's a monster and he's coming back better than ever and all this sort of stuff. Mm. Vinny Jr., Jude Bellingham. Could I witness a Jude Bellingham masterclass? Could I witness Haaland getting back into the team? And I don't know. Yeah, it, it's going to be a Champions League classic as it tends to be in recent years. And I'm going to enjoy the city as well. Get some... Uh, get some... And, f- and find out what their uh, halftime uh, snack. Maybe you can reserve a bocadillo for halftime. Oh, yeah. I'm going to look into doing some <laughs> reservations for halftime, for sure. Yeah. It's be the, the way it is now. So you're back on Thursday, and I th- I have an idea for what I'm going to do on Monday. I'm back Wednesday. I mean, you're back on Thursday's podcast. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Um, What day are you? Sunday? Monday. Yeah, I'm not going to... I mean, I could definitely listen. I, I can... I can phone in. I can do a pod. I can be part of it with this new headset. Okay. With that new headset, you can do anything you like. You tell me what you need and I can get it done. Brilliant. Okay. In the meantime, uh, have a great weekend, everyone. And um, yes, we, oh, we also, we're doing something very exciting tomorrow, but we'll, yeah. we'll check we'll, our social media for info yeah, on that. Keep an eye on our social media tomorrow. I mean, yeah. I don't know if I'd call it very exciting considering what we have to, where we have to fly again. That's all I'll say. Okay.